We're fascinated by the natural gas market, which has cratered here after an unusually warm winter. Yet I think it's actually set up for a rally if we get a hot summer, especially since we're just beginning to export the stuff in large amounts. And there's no one who understands the dynamics of this business better than Sharif Suki, the man who built up Chenier Energy, the nation's number one LNG exporter. As its founder and CEO, before getting ousted after a spat with big name investor Carl Icahn, as well as the company's uh, board of directors, that was back in December of 2015. But when that happened, Suki didn't just give up and go home. That's not his style. He's such a believer in this natural gas story that he went and created an entirely new entity called Tellurian. Tellurian Investments. It was roughly a year ago, with the goal of finding new ways to profit from the fact that nat gas is so cheap in America and so expensive nearly everywhere else. Boy, does this guy work fast. Earlier this month, Tellurian acquired Magellan Petroleum in a deal that took the company public. Now trades under the symbol TELL, up really big today, up 12%. He's got a terrific team. He's working to build a new liquefied natural gas facility, Driftwood LNG in Calcasieu, Louisiana, with an accompanying pipeline. And the company also has Magellan's old exploration production assets in the UK and Australia. That's a lot to accomplish in a year. And could be that Tellurian's getting off the ground just in time for a new natural gas renaissance. So let's check in with Sharif Su the founder and former CEO of Chenier Energy, who's now the co-founder and chairman of Tellurian, find out more about what's happening with this new company, of course, what's happening with the industry. Mr. Suki, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. I haven't seen the man who called it right. He's back. Good to see you Thank again. you. All right, Tellurian. Um, a lot of competitors come in in the interim, right? We had LNG. You were the first mover, but a lot of other companies have come in or are building. Uh, are you too late? No. Why? Let's put it in perspective. Uh, the existing projects, including Cheniers and, Ca and Cameron mm -hmm. and Freeport, are going to represent about 9 to 10 BCF of production by the time they're finished by 2020, let's say. Right. And everything else has stalled since then. So uh, the global market is 750 BCF a day, of which 70 is in the United States. So that leaves 280 for the rest of the world. We are going to export a minute portion okay. of what the world requires. And because we're such a huge, we can be a huge producer in this country, bigger than everybody else. We are the biggest right. producer. Yes, but we can also be a very significant exporter as long as we build the infrastructure. Okay. But even if we double the existing capacity that we have, it's only going to be 2% of the global market. Okay. So it's nothing. Now, uh, you've got a team put together that is very experienced, and you've got Bechtel again, Bechtel, and, and you've, you've got um, some other companies that I say are pretty good at what they're doing, uh, same crew to some degree, uh, Charter. Do you think you can leapfrog ahead of others and get things done faster because you know how to build this? Well, I think the, the key thing is uh, we're going to go at our pace. Okay. We're not going to worry about what everybody else is doing. Right. Uh, I, and we have a formula that has worked in the part in the past. The first thing is bring your suppliers as part of the team and work with them to cut time and cut costs. Okay. And the second thing is always when you have talented people, pay them well based on performance okay. because that's how you get results. But how are you going to raise all this money? Sharif, once again, I mean, you raised it for LNG, but um, for Chenier, but it's a fortune to build these things. Yes. You're not worried? No, I've done it once when I had debt and uh, I was in a hole, and this time I have a great advantage. I have no debt. I'm starting with a fresh uh, slate, and it's not that hard. Plus, we have our experience behind us and our track record behind us. And as you say, my team has worked with me for a long time. So the slowly... And you got Total and GE already in there. Yes, and I got two very significant institutional investors that have come in. But management has put in $60 million ourselves. Right. Now, well, give us the state of things. Uh, natural gas has just gone down big in this country in price, but not around the rest of the world. So it's still a local market. But we have a tr tremendous cost advantage over everybody else. So even three, four years from now, you still think that the, uh, the difference will be good for us. We have two st very strong advantages. The first one is natural gas. We have 100 years or more worth of reserves. So it's, in it's enormous. And uh, the, the credit goes to the producers. They're getting better all the time. Uh, three years ago, I thought they had finished improving, but no, they continue to lower the cost of production in the U.S. dramatically by a factor of 15, 20% every year, 
which is amazing. Now in the, in the Marcellus and Utica, you can produce it less than a dollar in MMBTU. Which is incredible, right? And I mean, the Haynesville, less than a buck and a half. So it, it's just amazing. And the second advantage is we have the cheapest liquefaction in the world. We proved it at Chenier, where we brought in uh, our projects on time, on budget. Right. And it doesn't seem to happen anywhere else in the world. Okay, now, uh, I know that you have commented publicly that you think that the Trump administration is a little bit better for oil and gas. Deregulation, great, I would think, for this business under Trump, right? Yes. And uh, EPA? Yes. Under and as always, the pendulum swings a little bit too far in one direction and comes back, and now it's coming back. So it's going to work to our advantage a little bit. But I have to say that the Obama administration was great for right. us. Right, you were able to get a lot done. Now, let me, let me ask you, you, you've nailed the price of oil. I've just got to ask you, you were dead right. You said it was going to finish in the 50s a year ago, which is a great call. Any feel for oil now with OPEC? I think uh, it, uh, the only feel I don't have is for timing, because I think right now it's pretty much where it should be. Okay. And um, I, th I think if you go back a few years, Ali and I mean, never wanted to let it go over 70. Yeah. His, his king overruled him okay. and suffered the consequences. All right, last question. i got to ask this. Uh, immigrant from Lebanon, how do you feel about our country these days? Great. Right. It's the greatest country in the world. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. That's Sharif Suki, go batter chairman of Tellurian. That symbol is T-E-L-L. -L. It was up 12% today, so please be careful. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.